Welcome to the Pacific Ocean. This is Ogasawara called the Bonin Islands. This island in particular is Chichijima and all around me, surrounded around this boat is the Pacific Ocean, the sea. We have so much beautiful marine life underneath the ocean here. This is called the Galapagos of the East for a reason. There's so many unique species just indigenous to this area. I'm really excited to see what's underneath the sea here. I've never done an episode like this, so I'm pretty excited to start. Let's go diving. Ogasawara is a scuba diving jewel in the Pacific. It's a 24-hour ferry ride, 1,000 kilometers from central Tokyo. Ferry is the only way to get there, no flights, so you have to be committed to staying for a week. It makes all trips to Ogasawara very special. There are dozens of dive sites around Chichijima, the main island. Almost all dives depart from Ogasawara village, the main town. The island history is international, tied with whaling, but since it was returned to Japan in 1968, it's become a sanctuary for wildlife and it shows with the incredible diving under the Pacific. I left with dive company Fisheye in the morning. They have a pension available for stay and dive packages. Prices are typically high in Japan, operators often overly conservative in practice, but all have a passion for exploring the seas below, and that makes it easy to connect with them. There are 78 known dive sites on the map here. Some are World War II wrecks, like our first dive in Futami Bay. Our dive master gives us an overview of our first dive. The dive site floor depth is 33 meters or 108 feet. It's a Japanese submarine chaser, number 50, Kusente, was built by Hitachi Zosen in November 1943, sunk by Allied forces less than a year later in July 20th, 1944. The number 50 subchaser has been residing on the bottom of Futami Bay ever since. Safety check, mask, regulator, let's dive. Descend slowly and equalize the pressure by swallowing or pinching your nose. Visibility is good, but it gets a little tougher to see near the bottom where the wreck rests. An old World War II helmet. The ship has been taken over by the sea. I believe this metal object used to lower rescue boats into the sea. The ship funnel is now home to a lot of marine life. The bomb seriously destroyed the deck. Penetration diving is impossible here. It's mostly twisted metal and thrown cables now, at peace. The 76.2 millimeter gun is the most notable feature, standing tall like it did when it was built more than 75 years ago. Wreck diving is one of the most fascinating reasons to explore under the seas. Beyond the funnel, I could see something rather large circling towards the bow. It looked three meters long, almost 10 feet. It's a sand tiger shark, Shirowani in Japanese. Now they say they're harmless to divers, but I see a shark, I try to get out of the way. But I've lost sight of them. They could be anywhere down here, 25 meters below the surface. Do you see them? They're nowhere near that side of the boat, nor on deck. 
never panic when scuba diving. Eventually, they'll reappear. Close call. Too close. Sand tiger sharks are often here in late summer, you know, hanging around the wreck yard. Seems like a place you'd find a shark. They move slow, in and out of the silt between the metal and the rack. Maybe it's time to surface. Down there for almost. It wasn't dangerous at all. We saw um, there were not one, not two, but three sharks down there. Very big ones. And they're going to be here for just a couple more weeks. They're here. And none they saw me cook on either, no? Ah. Yeah. So the sharks are going to be here for just another couple weeks. They're actually uh, pregnant, so they've come here to give birth, which makes me think that they might want to protect their baby. So there was a little bit of freaking out down there because it's not every day that you get within, I think it was like 15 centimeters or like six inches of it just came right by me. I was somewhat nervous. They had big teeth. Did you see the big teeth? But as I reflect back on my own life, there's still a lot that I want to do. So maybe let's just not do that again. But it was still pretty cool. <laughs> it was pretty cool. 10 minutes later, I was still pretty impressed. That was just awesome. <laughs> that was just awesome. The beauty of this island is not just below the sea. The deep blue color of the Pacific here is called bone in blue. It's so clear in the shallow parts. It's a blue that we see in our dreams with white sandy beaches. It's very easy to fall in love with the Ogasawara Islands. Nature has expressed its love with the hard rock on the south side of Chichijima. Do you see it? The captain was taking us around to an island sanctuary accessible only with a licensed guide. This southern island is called Minamijima. It's where sea turtles go to lay their eggs and a wildlife preserve for birds. That's Minami Jima. This boat's too big to go in there, so we gotta snorkel in there. Let's go in. The way in is under the rock arch. The water here is a warm 27 degrees Celsius, 80 degrees Fahrenheit. snorkeled into here. This is Minamijima and it's famous for that and it's also famous because this beach in front of me is where a lot of the turtles will lay their eggs and uh, when they hatch there'll be a lot of these little baby turtles making their way into the protected sea through the tunnel over there and it's just an amazing sight to see. We won't get to see that today but with our guide we can scout around the island for about 30 minutes. The center of the island is sandy, like a little desert. Perfect for laying eggs, if I were a sea turtle.
we did see one little guy make his way into the sea. It's important not to disturb the wildlife in any way, so we cheered him on. It's not easy to swim through the waves to the open sea with those little arms, but with a lot of effort, he made it and we saw him leave us heading north. Happy travels, little guy. The captain knows a spot to see one of Ogasawara's friendliest visitors. We traveled 30 minutes to the north. Do you see their fins above the water? One jumped so high that I thought she was trying to fly. The dolphins here enjoy their stopover around the Ogasawara Islands, playing in the delightful bone-in blue waters. A few came right up to us. That seemed like an invitation to join them for the party down below. I jumped in most ungracefully. The trio not impressed fled to other parts. If you want to make friends with our seafaring mammal brotherins, making eye content and swimming gracefully is recommended just like them. They know you'll never be able to swim as nice or as fast, but are happy to circle you a couple of times, a little dance before heading off on their journey. And we were off too. During necessary surface intervals while diving, it's possible to find a cove, eat lunch, then snorkel. The water's so clear it looks like an aquarium. The safe shallow waters here have a beautiful society of fish who don't mind swimming with human visitors. The residents of Chichijima are quite protective of nature and wildlife, and some have made close friendships with them, like the stingray that come to the docks in town at night. They will come up to be hand-fed by friendly hands and faces who have welcomed them for years. It's a funny sight to see one look you back in the eye. I enjoyed coming here every night to see who came to visit us. This is Sakayura Beach, a few minutes by motorbike from town, and in the center is wreck Hinkomaru, sunk by a torpedo during the Pacific War in 1944. Its rusted frame slowly disintegrating into an outline on the shallow sea floor. Diving the Ogasawaras is a once-in-a-lifetime experience for most. Formerly known as the Bonin Islands, the animals and marine life are very friendly, not scared of humans like in the Galapagos, which is why this place is called the Galapagos of the East. Underwater, you can see so many familiar faces from around the Pacific Rim, as well as some unique breeds. This moray eel is a giant. Let's not disturb him, or he'll just cruise away like that. This small white tip reef shark is patrolling the neighborhood.
Ah, look at that beautiful sea turtle swimming majestically in the waters above. The beauty of scuba diving is that you can feel like you're flying around just like the marine life. Most parts of the sea here have incredible visibility even at deeper recreational diving depths. On one dive we encountered a school of manta rays on their way somewhere else. Here's one we often see a sushi, Magoro, but this time he's the one looking for a meal. The trumpet fish shadows another fish looking for a good meal. It's an odd couple. We have to remember that we're just visitors in the fish world down here. Once we encountered a mature tiger shark, the non-friendly kind. It's rare to see such large ones in the area. And he took off when he saw the odd looking scuba divers. Good news for us. Advanced divers here often explore the caves. You can find a lot of unique marine life like lobsters hanging out in the cracks. These lobsters came out to welcome us or shoo us away. It's a fun, peaceful world 25 meters under the sea. Shall we call it a day? Let's do a safety stop three minutes at five meters before ascending. Japan has some of the world's most amazing dive spots, Ogasawara being my favorite. Anytime you see water this beautiful, you know there's going to be an adventure in the seas below. To me, it's worth the 24-hour ferry ride and one week stay. If you ask me, one week isn't enough. If you'd like to know more about Ogasawara for an on-land view, check out my Tokyo's Paradise Island Far in the Pacific episode and see you there. If you liked it, hit that subscribe button and check out another one of our shows. Don't miss my second live streaming channel, Only in Japan Go! and check out location photos on Instagram. Mata ne.